Um, we are so pleased to have you here joining us today for the opening of two amazing exhibitions in the Hunger Gallery, the Village Project, which was an amazing project by two uh, Northwest Connecticut artists working in the city of Waterbury Schools to develop uh, an amazing installation that you see right over there. Please feel free to go to that gallery after this. And um, I'm going to pass the microphone off to our new chief curator, who's been here for a month. Two months, two months. Um, Kathy Feldman.
an every sphere as well, and this goes back to the manifest story. And so uh, I would like to recognize uh, both Elton Paul and his brother Rich and their families, and Carter. Uh, they have a long history with the Mad Cup Museum and uh, with Warner. So uh, uh, Rich and Elton's father was the president of the board, their grandfather was the president of the board. Uh, they knew uh, both uh, Roth and Smith. They have both been invaluable in giving me information that found its way into the catalog and will find its way into the biography. So I want to thank them also because the family loan support to the show. And that leads us back to one other important very story before I start to talk about Roth and Smith. And that is that in many ways, Elton is responsible for all of this happening here at Worker because when he was, correct me if I'm wrong, 18 years old, he won the award. About when he won the award. And it was a cash award, and his father said, Go and buy something that you'll remember. And he went to Munson Gallery in New Haven, and there he saw the Curtis Roth, and he liked it. And he bought it. And the dealer said, you know, because it's just up the road in West Reading, you should visit it, you should make contact and visit it. And they became good friends for a couple of years. And through Elton, his father, and Phil Capel, and the director, and other members of the board, went to visit Curtis Roth in West Reading, Reading on Umbawak Road, if you know West Reading and all. And because of that, in July of 1964, there was the only comprehensive exhibition of Roth's work here that included paintings, prints, and drawings. Roth passed away the following month, and the museum was able to acquire not only the great collection of prints, but lots of the plates, some of which are on display here, and this became the major Roth center. And so it's really through Elton and Elton and his family that Roth has come to be established here in Waterbury and at the Mad Club. So thank you. <laughs> so Ernest Roth was born on January 17th of 1879. He was born in Germany in Stuttgart and came to the United States with his family, Bakers, at the age of five, moved to New York. Studied at the National Academy of Design, everyone in college studied the Academy of Design under uh, several different lesser known artists today. And as soon as he turned 21 and attained American citizenship, he went abroad, and he went to Italy, 1905. And in Italy, he was actually on his way to Paris, he was going to stop in Italy, go on to Paris, he fell in love with Italy, and he stayed. And he stayed for three years, and he only made two short trips outside, one to Constantinople, one, I think, to relatives in Germany. I think that's why there are two German actions as well. In the meantime, Smith was born in Hong Kong to a father who was living in Germany, but was obtained to distraction. His father was a ship merchant, and uh, his family, after the father perished, his family moved to Germany and then moved to the United States. And he ended up going to Cornell where he also got an architecture degree. They met each other in an architectural office in 1908 or 1909, and they became good friends, and that friendship would last until Smith died in 1959. Smith uh, had a sister who lived in uh, uh, Stony Creek. He lived in uh, Connecticut for about 15 years, for about 1919 to about 1934 before relocating to the Maitland Center in Florida. But the most wonderful work that they did over the course of their career was when they traveled together. There are some brilliant works that each of them did earlier, but as far as consistency, they played off of each other. They were very amicable traveling companions. And one of the things that always astounds me is how different they were. Smith, very outgoing, wrote many, many articles and books over the course of his career. Roth wrote one page, two pages of the whole course of his life. And Roth was shy 
but everyone loved Roth. They came to his studio in New York and printed. And some of you may know John Taylor Arms, Louis Rosenberg, uh, Fritz Eichenberg, Pierre Eby, all of them printed with Roth at his 14th Street studio. So, what I'd like to do is give you the layout of the exhibition, which is roughly speaking chronological and by region, and to tell you what you'll find in each area, and then to point out one or two seminal works in that area. So, if we could step back into the first room, I will point out how the exhibit is laid out. If at any time you have questions, I'm glad uh, to stop and answer them. Uh, there are some fascinating comparisons here, and you'll find that there are works by two other artists that have managed to sneak into the show. One is the better known John Taylor Arms. I know many of you know this name. He lived in Fairfield. He was an outstanding technician. He had 2010 vision. He was completely ambidextrous. He could work day and night on very, very precise prints. What is not known is that he often took Ernest Roth's lead, going to where Roth had gone, doing a scene Roth had done first. So there are three comparisons in here. And the other very important influence is Joseph Pennell. Pennell was a major printmaker, biographer, whistler, friend of whistler. And so just here by this wall back up there is also one work by Pennell in the exhibition. But if you'll join me, those of you who would like, and there are seats available, if you'll join me in the first room, and I'll give you a little walking tour of where they went over a 20-year period of action together. So, let me begin by saying, let me begin by saying that the exhibition starts when you come through the door and you'll see a drawing, a drawing by Ernest Brough that includes a sketch of Andre Smith's sketching. And it's in the little town of Lisieux in France. And we thought that was the appropriate way to start. There is also a photograph of Roth over here in the vitrine. So you get to see what both of them looked like. As you come in, if you turn to the left, the first trip they made together in 1913-14, with Roth's new wife, Elizabeth, this is something I've established only recently, that they've gotten married in between two of the European trips. They take Elizabeth along, and they go to Italy. And so, Italy begins here, and there are two earlier prints, two earlier etchings, just to show what Roth was capable of before he went traveling with Smith. And then from here, what we see all the way around down to that corner of the room are all images of Venice, because they both loved Venice, and Roth was uh, particularly fond. They were both very industrious. We know that Roth, at one point, did 30 etchings in one year, more than one every two weeks, over the course of, of 1907, for instance. And what we have here, partly due to the generosity of the Hall family, are preparatory drawings along with finished products. Sometimes, they sat next to each other and did the exact same view. And you can actually see them and picture them. These two prints, you would think that this drawing was for this print and for this print. In fact, this drawing was done for this print. This is Andre Smith and these two are Ernest Roth you'll see how close they are at the beginning. And as you go down the hall, you'll see two of Santa Maria della Salute sitting next to each other, two drawings that they did of the basin of San Marco from the same point, 10 years apart, because I think Roth went back because he remembered what his friend Andre Smith had done. And then as you get further down, you'll find that there's a whole wall of the most beautiful, precise little etchings by Andre Smith. Now, Smith was trained as an architect, and so they have the kind of restraint that one would expect from somebody trained as an architect. As you curve around, the three works that are at the end are when Roth actually hits his stride, 1913, 1914. And then, 
Florence begins, because they also lived in Florence. We have the documents. We know now where Roth lived in Florence. And they also went to hill towns. They didn't always travel together when they were in Italy. Sometimes one went off in one direction, one the other. But you will find that there are images of Arezzo, of Perugia, and of uh, uh, other hill towns. And then they went, uh, uh, sorry, Roth went to Rome. He, I don't think he took Smith with him. And most of these artists were intimidated by the long history of Prince of Rome, by Pyrenees and by others. Roth did just two, arms none. And the two are right here. That's the division because the rest of the room is France. Because after they came home and had a couple of shows early in 1914, they went back, and this time they went to France. And they went to Paris, and they went to Normandy, and they went to Picardy. And so what we've done, and I have to thank Phil for this, the brilliant maps that are Baydecker maps that are dated between 1909 and 1913. The map of France is here. You can locate these cities on that map the way they would have used that kind of map. And then there are three prints of Paris and three prints of Rouen and a set over here that is of Amiens. Look at the careful draftsmanship on both the drawings and the plates. And then a group of four drawings that are over here. And finally, a little bit more in France, two images of Beauvais over to the right, two images of Abbeville over to the left, one of them arms, one of them Roth. And you can see Arms is just tracking where Roth is going. We even have a, a page in the Archives of American Art by Keith Shaw Williams, Roth's protege, who says, he's very, Roth very angry. Arms came to the studio, saw what I was doing, and went off and did his own. <laughs> you never get that kind of documentation, and unfortunately we have it. So there was an Arms down here that was of the Arch of the Conca, and it is below the Roth the Abbeville, and then there is one that I'll mention that it has to do with Siena. So, if we can go back into the next room, I will introduce Spain and then the later travels. <laughs> to, continue, to continue the story, in 1914 they come home, they immediately contribute to different exhibitions, and Roth helps to found the Brooklyn Society of Etchers. 1916, he becomes its second president, 1917 to 1920, and serves on the board for many years after that. And we know that the Brooklyn Society of Etchers, the most important print society in the country, Chicago is also important, but not as important as New York, and we know that it turns into the Society of American Etching in 1931, and then that turns into the Society of American Graphic Art Artists, and it continues today as the most important printmakers organization in the United States, and in fact, Dean Prozia, the president of Saga, is here with us today, and a wonderful printmaker herself, and so we're glad that she can be here as part of this uh, long tradition. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Uh, both of them were so busy marketing their work that they didn't do many prints in 1916, 1917. And then Smith enlists. And he goes off, he becomes a captain uh, in uh, the uh, uh, American Expeditionary Forces. He helps to design the Medal of Honor. He does a lot of drawings while he's there on duty, and the war ends, November 1918. And so he has the opportunity to do some more drawings before he goes home. And then he publishes one book of a hundred of those drawings. They didn't have to do with warfare itself. It's never battle. It's never brutality. It has to do with the everyday lives. And he publishes this in 1919, and the book is here in the vitrine. It has an etching, it's its front of place, piece. It has, we have the drawing, one of the drawings from the town where he was stationed. And 
this is one of the great things about coming here to Mat the Mattapuck. There is all of this memorabilia, and it included this Christmas card sent from Smith to Roth in December of 1918. And he designed the card, even though other people contributed. So that was a great, uh, a great find for us, uh, just within the last couple of weeks, frankly. They don't travel for a couple of years, war and uh, everything else that's going on. Now they want to travel again. It becomes 1920. So they want to pick out a place that the war hasn't affected so much and that there haven't been so many printmakers. And so they go to Spain. Roth goes first. He goes four months earlier. We have dated drawings from September, October, November. And he goes earlier. Then, in the spring, Smith and Roth's wife, Elizabeth, join him. They come over to Paris and they join him. And it's another very productive year. And so this wall, this whole wall, is devoted to Spain, plus on the baffle, over here are the five prints that are on the baffle. Early on, Roth went to a few places where we know that Smith didn't go, Zaragoza being one of them. The next one, uh, going south to Seville. We don't think that Smith ever went to Sevilla. These are of Sevilla. Together, they went to Cuenca, a little hill town, about 100 miles to the east of Madrid, and there are two prints here from then. And then they get together and go to Toledo. And we have dated drawings from Toledo that are in the Hispanic Museum, uh, the Hispanic Society Museum in uh, Manhattan. The wall over here on the baffle are five images of Toledo from various different angles. And part of the duties, part of the hardships of doing research is that you often have to go to these places yourself. I and mean, nobody gets to go without seeing what's actually there. And so I've tracked them down. In fact, Meredith and I often travel with Andre Smith and Ernest Roth. <laughs> and so we, uh, I had the opportunity, I, I was at the National Gallery for many, many years, and I sometimes served as courier, and I had occasion to be a courier for work that went to the Prado in Madrid, and so I went uh, off, and I went to Toledo, and I actually wanted to know his vantage point for the approach to Toledo, which is both in the panel from the opposite side and over here. I realized that he actually climbed halfway up a stony hillside to do the drawing, that he couldn't have done it from below, and he couldn't have done it from the road all, all the way up above. Together, what they really fell in love with was Segovia. And so there is one entire space down here of eight prints and drawings, including some preparatory drawings, that have to do with the great cathedral of Segovia. We are fortunate not only to have some of the preparatory drawings, but one of the plays. And so one of the things that we discovered within the last few weeks or is that among the 135 Roth plates that the museum owns, that there were seven that we could put into the exhibition. And so uh, uh, David, I have to give David credit here, uh, David cleaned them up, he inked them, and they look brilliant in a way that you wouldn't have been able to see them even from the latter part of Roth's life. They are uh, absolutely stunning to have here in the ex exhibition. 1923, a little bit of difficulty enters into the discussion, and that is because Andre Smith had had a, le a leg injury during the war, and now the leg, end of 23, beginning of 24, was amputated. He couldn't travel. In late 23, Roth went back to Italy on his own, his beloved Italy. And the end wall is all of that beloved Italy. And if I can have everyone just move down, that'll be the uh, next to last stop when we get to that wall. To continue the light motif of the exhibition, we know that they sat together, and I've now come to believe that sometimes they might have even allowed the other to do, use the drawing for an etching. And so here on this wall, sorry, there is a drawing that's by Andre Smith. It precisely matches the etching that you see here, which is by Roth. 
And the Grim Spain, which is over here, just behind Mark Chabot over here, you will see the plate for it. So you can actually look back and forth at the print and the plate at the same time. So, Roth goes off on his own to Italy this time, and he produces some of the great prints of his career. And he goes back to his beloved Venice, and he does the Stones of Venice, a nod, in this case, to John Ruskin, and his enormous volume, uh, set of volumes on Venice. Uh, I think he actually is looking at Whistler and thinking about how Whistler might have done this image. And then the large print in the center is not Roth. This is one of those arms, because Arms saw that Roth had gone to Siena and done this view through the arch. This is the correct orientation. This is in reverse. I think Arms was trying to disguise the fact that they were so close. <laughs> but the Roth is dated 1924 and the Arms 1927. And of course, we had to have these here because this is your train station tower. And this is the inspiration, so it makes perfect sense. Uh, beyond the map of Italy, these three prints come from this same period, which is this heroic moment. And that is continued actually by the plates. And so you see the whole set of plates that are here, and above, a drawing and an etching of Verona that's treated in a very careful way. But now I have to tell you another little story over here. The drawing that you see over here is exceptional in the exhibition. And it is on loan to us very kindly from Jill and Ridge Hall. When Smith couldn't travel in 1923-24, and he couldn't go back, he started to imagine what a great travel would be to a small, unspoiled town. And he did a set of five drawings of what he called Espero. And he published this in Architectural Record 1926. And it's his imagination of what I would like in my ideal little village, unspoiled by modernity. And so this was the first in that set. The others, several of the others, are in Maitland, down in Florida. The break that you see here is before their last two trips together. So the break shows us this set all the way to this graphic. And these are all Smiths. And to a certain degree, in the latter part of the 20s, he became darker. The mood changes. They're a little bit more fantastic. They're a little bit darker. And you can see whether it's uh, the square that you see here or the two Venetian images, how different they are from the Spartan, precise, early works that you saw in the first room. So these are from the late 20s. Roth, however, doesn't change. He continues to develop. And so what we have are the final prints in the exhibition. The three that you see here are all of Cubio, small hill town in Umbria. What you see on the left is one of the impressions from the plate, the cancel plate in the center, and then a proof from the cancel plate. This was commonly done by artists to show that they weren't going to print anymore. And so we know, and he even dates, when he canceled the plate. And all of these plates are canceled but one. The little one on the end here, which is Andre Smith, a corner of the Grand Canal. 1930, it's the last time they go to Europe together. It's the last time Roth ever goes to Europe. And for the next decade, he mines the drawings that he did to bring back and make etchings. And so Gubbio, Camoli, small village, fishing village, and at the end of the wall, the two images, the two great images of the Cathedral of the Duomo in Siena. After 1930, they stay in touch. Smith moves to Florida, opens Maitland, the research uh, center, 1935. At the research center, he invites Roth to come down. He does three shows of Roth's work down there. He writes about him. 
But he himself stopped doing prints for the most part after 1930. His vision wasn't as good, and he was moving toward a greater sense of abstraction and non-representational work. And you can see that in some of these late images as well. He will continue to work in Florida, but keep coming back to Brantford, Pine Orchard, and uh, uh, also Stony Creek. And uh, uh, that would be up until 1959. Roth would live until another five years, 1964, and then he dies in August, on August 20th of 1964. What we've done here is to bring together all of these works by two artists who were close friends, who developed uh, an affinity for one another over a 20-year period. All of us know that uh, uh, Picasso and Brock worked together for a couple of years, that Monet and Renoir worked together for a couple of years, that there are lots of artists who play off of one another for a year, two years, three years. As far as I can tell, I have an, another example of two artists who played off of one another's work for a period of 20 years and stayed friends for 40 years, often supporting each other's career. I hope you enjoy the show. It's been a labor of love for me, and I thank you for your kind attention. Thanks. Thank you.